Say to God, come on, put those hands together. Let's praise him today. Let's praise him. Yes, it's just something about Sunday morning. Good evening. I'm Brother Charleston Boyd with the Grand Avenue Church of Christ. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, I have a few short um, uh, messages, well, a short message that I want to share with you tonight, our lesson. And uh, it, it won't take very long. Uh, and the only reason I say that because I want you to know that whatever little bit of time we spend together is going to be worth it. I pray God will bless this lesson to you, that it will be beneficial, that it will be uplifting and encouraging to you as much as it was to me as I was putting it together. Pray with me at this time. Heavenly Father and God Almighty, we thank you for this blessed time to come together tonight to study your word. We thank you for blessing us to see you yet another day. We ask you, Almighty God, that we have done the things on this day that are pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. We ask you, God, to be with this lesson and the mindset that goes along with it and the love that was put into it that it would register in someone's heart to be ever more dutiful as we try to bring souls to Christ. Thank you for everything that you have done, are doing, and will do in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, tonight's lesson is uh, basically ran, uh, uh, was prepared based off of, uh, of a commercial, of a commercial uh, that I was watching. And uh, on that commercial, it was a, a gentleman that was on there was talking about, uh, and basically here's what he, what he was saying. He was saying that uh, uh, the climate situation that we have in our, on our earth, uh, climate control, the air, the clean air, there's a problem with it. Talking about the deadly car emissions and things that are going on. Um, and I heard the guy on the, on the commercial uh, uh, use the term, uh, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. And what he was really and truly uh, referring to was the fact that it, uh, running out of time to keep uh, breathable air uh, on, on our planet. Uh, there's so many things that are polluting the air. And uh, as I said, the car emissions and the factories and all those different things, smoke, uh, even cigarette smoke, uh, as it pollutes the air. And uh, so he said we're running out of time uh, to try to fix this condition. Uh, so it, it, it made me think about something. It made me think about how important it is to have uh, safe air to breathe, how important it is to be able to uh, take advantage of the, of the air that God has blessed us to be able to receive. And even more important um, it's not just the safe air that we have to breathe and working on that issue but um, the safe relationship that we have uh, with the one who made the air breathable for us uh, from the beginning and that's the relationship we have uh, with the Lord and it seems like man is there steady trying to solve the issues uh, uh, of, of the world um, while really truly missing out on the real issue which is his soul and so with that uh, it made me think about the fact that even though man thinks we're running out of time for clean air, really running out of time for getting your soul together with the Lord the way that it should be. Now I know you're saying, so we don't know when the Lord is coming back. And that really truly is a key point to my lesson tonight. And so the lesson tonight I'm sharing with you is, of course, running out of time. And because we don't know where time is going to end, uh, then that's the main thing that you want to think about because time is, is, is here today and gone tomorrow. Um, what am I doing in, in essence of trying to make sure that I do what God wants me to do, especially in respect of trying to save someone's, uh, someone's soul? All over the world, uh, uh, there's this problem that man is trying to resolve with, with the climate and everything, but uh, little does he know that it's really a whole, not a whole lot he can do about it. I mean, he can do the things about the car emissions, and that's all really good. He can stop some of the factory uh, emissions that come out with the with the uh, polluted uh, chemicals that are in the air. And he can do all those things, but God is the one that gave us the air to breathe, and God knows what's going on within the air, and He's going to deal with it His own way. And I know there's cities right now in the world that are polluted with, and they're kind of dark and cloudy because of the of the pollution in the air, and people are having to wear certain uh, breathing apparatuses and everything just to breathe. Uh, good clean oxygen into their to their blood, but even God knows about that situation, and God will be the one to handle it. So, no matter what man does, it's only God who can uh, do what whatever He wants to, and uh, whenever He wants to, and however He wants to. And yeah, that puts me in the mind of a song. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to the lesson. Paul told Timothy uh, that there was coming a time when people would not. Uh, want to listen to the truth. They will not endure sound doctrine. Rather, they would they want to hear the things in which they want to hear. 
uh, and listen to those things because those things are more uh, applicable to the things that they want to do. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, and I hope that you do have your Bible, because we're going to be turning to these verses and just reading these scriptures, just so you'll know that what I'm telling you tonight is uh, coming straight from God's Word. I can tell you a lot of things. I can tell you a lot of opinions, but I don't want to opinionize anything tonight. I want to give you strictly uh, these scriptures from God's Word. So if you have your pen and paper, you can take these down. Some scriptures I'm not going to basically ask you to go to, but I am going to share them with you in reference uh, to what this uh, lesson is talking about, and you can jot those down. But I do want to go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, if you will. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'm going to begin in verse 3, and where it says, and I'm going to actually be reading uh, from the, as you know, I like to read from the Living New Testament version. Um, so I'm going to share this with you uh, from, that, from that version. And verse number 3 says, uh, For there's going to come a time, when the people won't listen to the truth, uh, but will go around looking for teachers who will tell them just what they want to hear. And we know we're in that time now. We know that there's situations going on right now where people are going by what they want to hear versus what they need, need to hear. But verse 4 says, they won't listen to what the Bible says, but will uh, follow their own uh, misguided ideas. And that's what, what's happening in the world in the world today. Uh, but for him, uh, but he was telling Timothy, these things are going to happen, but I want you to continue to preach the truth. I want you to continue to be uh, uh, guided by what the word and the scripture says. And he said that back in verse 2 where it says to Timothy, yeah, I want you to preach the word of God urgently uh, to all, at all times, uh, whether you get the chance in season or out of season, uh, when it is convenient and when it is not convenient. Correct and rebuke uh, your people when they need it. Encourage them to do right and all the time, uh, all the time by feeding them patiently with God's word. And so he wanted Timothy to be sure that he stayed in the, in, in the position of, uh, first of all, making sure he did things properly himself so that he could be a leader in front of the people, leading by example, as he kept the people reminded of the things that they needed to do in walking the Christian walk and in that Christian walk, there's a responsibility that we should be trying to bring souls to Christ. And so he had to make sure that Timothy was, was, was understanding that, was getting that in his head, and was focusing on that. Uh, so with that being said, he wanted to make sure that we as disciples also uh, utilize that same mindset as he taught Paul taught Tim, told Timothy and taught him about the disciples, then the same thing we should be doing today is making sure we stay ready-minded of the things of which God would have for us to do. We're living in those times now. We're living in those times where people want to endure sound doctrine, uh, having engineers and, and want to hear things that they want to hear so they can do things that they, that they want to do. But Paul, Paul wanted to prepare Timothy for the hardest fight that Christians have that we have. And that hard fight is to endure and to fight the com for the complete to the complete uh, completion of the course, and that's the main thing. We as Christians, you know, we have our own lives that we lead, live. Uh, from time to time, we should never walk away from being a Christian, whether we're at home, whether we're at work, no matter where we are. But there are times when we find ourselves thinking about the fleshy things and everything, meaning thinking about uh, how we're gonna pay our bills. God told us don't worry about those things. What we're gonna eat, what we're gonna wear. Uh, whether or not I'm going to have a job tomorrow, what am I going to do about this this kind of pandemic that's going on, everything like that, should I go or should I not go, should my kids go to school, should they be uh, virtually taught and all these, all these things are going on and God knows about those things. They're going on for the Christians just like they're going on for the person that is not a Christian. But Paul let Timothy know that his time was running out. So he wanted to remind him of the things that he should be reminding other disciples of, just like we should be doing and keeping a, a, a close eye on one another and watch for those things or uh, making changes. And he made that statement to him in uh, verse 6 and 7 of this same scripture, of this same book. And in verse 6 and 7 of this same book, he said, I say this, and I'm reading out of the, again out of, the new, out of the Living New Testament version. It says, I say this because I want to be around to help um, help you I won't be around I won't be around to help you very much longer my time is almost run out very soon now I will be on my way to heaven that's what he wanted him to know I will be on my way to heaven but in saying that he let him know that I have fought 
long and hard for my Lord. And though it all, and the, and through it all, I may have I have kept the truth about him. And now the time has come for me to stop fighting and to rest. And very important and very significant is him saying, hey, I've been true to God. I fought the fight. In other words, I've done what God wanted me to do. I've kept the faith. Not only did I bring souls uh, to Christ, but I lived the life by example. So people could not blame me of anything. I was He was blameless. He was, he was in that position of where he was able to uh, uh, take on the hardships of Christianity. He he was he was he was in a position where people didn't trust him, but yet he had to still fulfill God's uh, the law of Christ that, that he wanted him to do and continue to preach the truth in, in bonds and, and and taking on uh, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, the prisons and all the things that he had to go through uh, in order to prove to God that he was who he was supposed to be, and he stood on that and he was a very good example for us. For us to follow, so he wanted him to know my time is really and truly, really and truly running out. Uh, but he charges Timothy again to watch, to endure. He charges Timothy to work and to prove his ministry for Christ, his ministry, Timothy's ministry for Christ, and in his life. And that was in verse five, which says, and uh, in verse number five, he says, "You must stay awake and watch out for all these dangers." Watch out. Be watchful for the dangers that are going on. And that's what we must do. Watch out. It's dangers going on all around us. We know what it is. We, the unjust this and the unjust that. The devil is busy, and he's busy 24-7. And told Timothy, and don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Bring others to Christ. Leave nothing undone that you ought to do. Bring others to Christ and leave nothing undone that you ought to do. In other words, make the sacrifice. Don't worry about suffering because God's got your back. Christ has your back. It's going to be a better, it's going to be more of a, of a privilege to die when you die, especially if you die in the Lord. So that's what he's trying to tell us as well. So brothers and sisters, we got to take a good look at the things going on around us. Uh, this is not to scare you, but it is to, it, but it is scary. So it's not to scare you into anything, but it is scary the times that we're going through. Uh, time to play is over. It's time to step up. At, it's time to to, 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 to to own up to what we need to do. Uh, just like Paul told Timothy, uh, make full proof of thy ministry as expected. And it's expected not wasn't only expected from him, but it's expected from us too. If we say we're children of God, we're, we're members of the body of Christ, we're Christian, then we need to prove that. How do we prove that? By first of all studying God's word and then applying what you study. Because I guarantee you, I promise you this, every time you study God's word, diligently study, meaning study, meditate upon it. Look for the scriptures. Find the, the, the corresponding scriptures that go with what it is that you're, you're studying and keeping it in context. Then I promise you, somewhere along the day or somewhere along the way, you're going to get a chance to make application of those scriptures to something that happens in your life. I promise you that. I promise you that. You know why? Because as a Christian, and we're living in this world of sin, of course we keep saying it and we'll say it again, this world is not our home. See, this world down here, it belongs to the devil. There's more sin in the world than there is salvation, than there is uh, saints in the world. And so as a saint, it means you've got to walk that straight and narrow path. But in doing so, you're going to encounter things. If you remember last time I talked about the fact that we're going to be very vulnerable. So in that vulnerability, there's going to be people just going to be messing with you just because. The situation is going to be happening also just because you're a Christian. They're going to test you. They're going to tempt you. They're going to vex you. But in doing all those things that they did do it to you. They did to Jesus. They did to the prophets that came before us. To all the disciples that came before us. It happened. Be ready for it to happen to us as well. But we're going to be on point with that. So we got to be ready to make full proof of the ministry of being a Christian. Time is truly running out. Now Paul writes in Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 3. Let's go over there right quick. Philippians chapter 1. All right. Yeah. And I'm sorry, not 1, 1 and 3, it's 1 and 23. Philippians 1 and verse 23. And I'm reading again. I'm reading again from the Living New Testament version. It says sometimes, and how you matter of fact, matter of fact, I'm going to read it from the King James Version, then from that. For I am in straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far, which is far, far better. But I'm going to start in verse number 21. In the Living New Testament version, down through verse 23. Verse 21 says, 
For to me, living means opportunities for Christ. And dying, well, that's better yet. But if living will give me more opportunities to win people to Christ, then I really don't know which is best, to live or to die. That's in verse 22. But verse 23 says, Sometimes I want to live, and other times I don't. For I long to go and be with Christ. How much happier for me than being here. Now, everybody out there that's listening to me, you know that there's times, and I said this last time, but it's just, it's, it's just real. So if it's real, it's worth repeating. If it's true, it's worth repeating. Sometimes you just want to give up. And I'm not saying give up and go into sin. It's just say, Lord, just come and get me now, Lord. Lord, come and get me now because things are going on around me and you just don't really know how much more you can stand. Lord, if you take me now, take me while I'm strong, Lord. Take me while I'm, I'm, I'm faithful, Lord. Take me while, while I, I, I'm reaching out to you, God. Just, just come and get me. And then you go to thinking and you look around and say, well, there's work that's left to be done. Uh, there's work that's undone. And if I don't do it, who's going to do it? And so you put yourself back in that position just like uh, what, what uh, Philip was saying is that I, I want to be I want to be here, Lord, to do what it is that you want me to do to gain souls because that's what you want me to do. And I want to rest with you, Lord. I want to be there with you. I want to, I want to, I want to finally get a chance to see you. But let your will be done, just like Jesus said in the garden. Let your will be done. If it's time for me to go, then take me. But if it's not, then that means you're leaving me here for the reason of unfinished work. And I need to finish that work. I need to be ready and willing to help bring souls to Christ. Because when and truly, the scripture says itself that the, the, it, it, there's a big harvest out there, but the laborers are few. I'm a laborer, and I want to labor until the end. And God is going to give me, give me my rest. But time is running out. Time is running, and that's the mindset that we should have. I don't know when, what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't even know, need, even know if I'll see tomorrow. And because I don't know if I'll see tomorrow, I don't know where death is, I want the last thing that's on my record to be that I was trying to help someone know more about Jesus. I want the last account on my record when Jesus, when I see the Lord in the end and stand before the judgment seat of Christ to say good, well done my good and faithful servant. For I have been faithful over a few things. I have been faithful to the point he says, come on, I'll make you rule over many. I want to be able to hear the Lord say that one day. And I know you do too. But time is running out for that. Time is running. And, and let me tell you why I even say time is running. Because you may say, well, you don't know what time is. And, and that's true. But guaranteed fact that because I don't know where time ends, let me think, and I've been here for me 62 years, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. We, some of us, have lived longer in the life that we're living now than our own parents did. You understand? And they may not have even been Christians. But even if they were Christians, God left me here past the age that my parent died for a reason. 10, maybe 15 years over the time that my parent passed. Our parents have passed, you know. But it's for a reason. Not that I can say, well, I live longer than my parents. That wasn't it. The reason is because there's still work that I need to be doing. There's still work that I need to be doing, and I need to be focused on that. Why? Because I do know that time is running out. And because I know time is running out, it's important that I do as much for the cause of Christ as I possibly can do. And I'm hoping you're thinking the same thing. We should be thinking the same way. That God has is not finished with us. It's not finished with us yet. So, Paul wrote that in Philippians 2, uh, in Philippians 1 and 23, and I read from 21 through 23. He knew that his time was running out, but that the church was on his heart so much. More about the souls to gain than it was about gaining that wonderful time that he's going to spend with Christ because Christ is going to give it to him. If he does what God wants him to do, if we do what God wants us to do, then you'll get that time with Christ. He's already promised it to us. The moral that of that is that time God is at the time whenever God is ready for us to do service or to die, we should be ready. And right now while we're living is to do service. When it's time for him to call and for us to answer, we should be ready for that as well. Be ready for the service of the king. Be ready for death for the king. We should be ready. And God knows he'll make everything all right. 
Paul in chapter 2 of Philippians says this in verse number 17, that he would be glad to die with the saints for Christ's sake. And this is a commitment and a dedication and a selflessness that all Christians should have for, this fall, for the sake of Christ. And that's in Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 17. And I'll go over that right quick. Just flip over. It's right over here on this page in verse number 17. And he just simply says that, and, and again in the Living New Testament version, and if my life blood is so to speak, to be poured out over your faith, which I am offering up to God as a sacrifice, that is, if I am to die for you, he says, even then, I will be glad, and I will share my joy with each one of you. In other words, I'll be happy to die for the cause of Christ with you. So when I'm here, and we're here, and we're working this together, and we die together, I'll be glad to die with you for the cause of Christ. Because in that joy, we'll see one another again. We will see one another again. And even Peter realized the duty to Christ to keep in mind of the saints of our obligation, of, the, of those saints of their obligation to win souls to Christ. But that he was running out of time. In 2 Peter 13 and 14, run over there with me if you will. 2 Peter 13 14. And he just, and it just seems like, uh, and I said 2 Peter, yes, yeah, 2, uh, 2 Peter, yeah. Chapter 1 and verse 13. And verse 13, it says, But the Lord Jesus, and I want to put it in verses, uh, verses 12, I plan to keep reminding you of the things, even though you already know them, and are really getting along quite well. But the Lord Jesus has showed me that my days here on earth are numbered. My days are numbered, and I am soon to die. As long as I am still here, I intend to keep sending these reminders to you. And so these disciples of the Lord realize that time is running out. But their duty to the church and to the saints was to keep reminding us of that we need to stay strong, need to stay focused, need to stay busy for the Lord because time is running out. It's running out for them, it's running out for you, it's running out for me. So brothers and sisters, there is something that we must do before we run out of time. And I want you to turn over to Ephesians, if you will. Ephesians chapter 4. We've been here before and we're going to go here as we prepare uh, to close. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. And I know you know what it is, but I want to share it with you uh, through this version here of the Living New Testament. So Ephesians chapter chapter 4, verses 1 through verse number 3, it says, I beg you, and this is, and I know it says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord in the King James Version, but it says in the Living New Testament version, it says, I beg you, I, a prisoner here in jail for serving the Lord, for serving the Lord, a prison, prisoner in jail, to live and to act in a way worthy of those who have been chosen for such wonderful blessings as these. Be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Make an allowance for each other's faults because of your love. If you love me, understand I'm going to make mistakes, but love me anyway. Try always to be led along together by the Holy Spirit and so be at peace with one another. Be at peace with one another. Why? Because we're going to need one another. I'm going to need you. You're going to need me. We need one another as we stay on this Christian road trying to make heaven our home. If our time is running out. There's just We just need one another to come together closer and closer because I don't know when you're going to pass on and you don't know when I'm going to pass on. But whenever one of us pass on, then we need to have that relationship one with another that we should have with that person we're trying to save after that love that conquers all. Now, dropping down in this same book to verse number 17. Verse number 17 simply says, and I'm reading out of, the, out of the same version, let me say this then, speaking for the Lord, live no longer as unsaved people do, for they are blinded and confused. Their closed hearts are full of darkness, 
and they are far away from the life of God. Why? Because they have shut their minds against him and they cannot understand his ways. Those are unsaved, but we can't live like that. We can't live like we can't live like we don't have Christ in our lives if we say we're Christians. Their mind is blinded because that God, the word of God doesn't say the things that they want to hear. You know, their ways are not trying to bring souls to Christ and not are they trying to get themselves right with God. But we, we can't live like that. We can't be in that category of people who even live that way. Verse number 18 says, I'm sorry, uh, verse number 21 says, if you have really heard his voice and learned from him, the truth concern the, the truths concerning him, it says, then throw off your old evil nature. If you really truly heard his voice through the spirit, talking to your conscience, and you really truly want to make that change for him, throw off that old evil spirit. Stop being mean to anybody. It says, the old you that was a partner in your evil ways, rotten through and through, full of lust and shame. Throw that off. Get rid of it. If you're still acting angry, if you're easy to get upset with your brother or anybody that you're around, saved or non-saved individuals, if you're still like that, then there's a problem somewhere. That faith that you should have in God is not truly trickling through like it should. There's something going on in your heart. Verse 20, uh, 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 verse 29. Let's drop down to verse 29. It says, don't use bad language. Are you still cursing? Are you still cursing? Does it slip out every once in a while? You know, if you entertain it in your heart, it's going to slip out. It's going to catch you at the most unopportune time, and somebody's going to catch you. Say only what is good and helpful to those that you are talking to, and that's anybody, anybody, and what will give them a blessing. You know, we have conversations with people all the time, but we ought to be talking in a godly way to where people feel like when they talk to us that they're going to leave with something special. They're going to feel like... They've been in the presence of the Lord. And not calling you Jesus. and not calling you God. But they're going to feel like they've been in the presence of a person different than norm, normal people that they talk to. They're going to want to confide in you. They're going to want to, they, they're going to feel like you have something to offer in a suggestion or in your conversation. And that's the way it should be. Because Jesus always has something to offer. People always got something out of the conversation. That's why they sat and listened to him. That's why multitudes came and they stood around him. That's why he had to go up on a high a mountain apart and talk to multitudes because there were so many people pressing on him. He needed to make sure everyone could hear what he was saying because what he was saying was special. What we say is special, especially when we're talking to individuals about the Lord. Don't cause the Holy Spirit to sorrow. You know, as the scripture said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't cause the Holy Spirit to sorrow by the way uh, that, you, that you live. Remember, He, the Holy Spirit, is the one who, make, who marks you to be present on the day when the, of on the day when salvation from sin will be complete. He's the one that's representing us. He's the one that guides us into all truth. He's the one that gives us the things to say when we can't say what it is that we feel. He's the one that makes the intercession to God in our behalf through Jesus Christ. It clears up what it is that those things that I can't just put it into words, you know. Well, then he makes it possible for it to be put into a word where the Lord will hear it and accept it. It says in verse 31, stop being mean, bad-tempered, and angry, quarreling, harsh words, and dislike of others should have no place in your lives. Shouldn't have no place. You know, and now part of that goes back to the vulnerability of our Christian walk, of our Christian life. It should have no place. But you say, well, man, sometimes you just get mad. You do. But you know what? You deal with that in your heart. Same place you got it in is where you keep it in. And you deal with it through the prayers of the righteous. You deal with it through talking to God in behalf of it. And you know what? A lot of people think that, you know, when I pray and everything, I pray about it and everything, but it just seems like I just still have this. Well, then that tells me your prayer life is raggedy then. It tells me that you don't really truly believe that what you're saying and who you're saying it to is going to give you what you need. And that's doubt. That's doubt. That's just straight up doubt. If you believe that you are who you're supposed to be and whose you're supposed to be, which is Christ's disciple, Christ's life, when Jesus prayed to God, he never did doubt that his father was going to hear him. Never did. Never did. Because if he'd ever doubted that, Jesus, that God would have heard his prayer, then he wouldn't have been praying nearly as much for one, and he never would have been successful in completing his mission for two. For two. And if I'm Christ-like, then we have to complete it. He said it. You have to complete the mission. You have to, from sin, in order to be able to be saved from sin, we have to be willing to complete our course. 
complete our course. And verse 12 says this, I mean 32 says, instead, instead be kind to each other, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you because you belong to Christ. What more can I say? It just said it. That's what we're working toward. Time is running out. This is what you're going to receive. Part of what you're going to receive. This is a feeling that you should have before your time runs out. Because why? You're on the battlefield for the Lord. Yes, you're tired. Yes, you're worn out. Yes, God knows that. The Lord knows that. Jesus Christ knows that. The Holy Spirit knows that. But so were the disciples that came before you that died in the Lord that are going to get up in the Lord. Already died in the Lord that's going to get up in the Lord. Well, I'm still here. And if I'm here when the end of time comes, when Christ comes back, when that trump sounds, I'll be caught up in the air. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. I want to be caught up in the air with him. I want to go back to heaven with him. And that's truly what you want. Then you're going to maintain this and work to the end. You're going to complete the course. In my conclusion, and as I close, I leave you with this thought on your heart. Paul concluded his delivery to Timothy Back over in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he completed his delivery and concluded it by sharing this confident acknowledgement with him. So let's go right back over there. And again, as we're closing, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and verse number 8. In verse number 8, this is what Timothy told, Paul told Timothy, if he stayed on the battlefield and completed the course. He says, in heaven, reading out of the living New Testament, in heaven, a crown is waiting for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me. And you consider that me being you. He was talking about himself. His time was finished. He fought the good fight. He kept the faith all the way to the end. He completed the course. So if we do so, just as Paul, because time is running out for us, just like it was running out for Paul. And you ought to be able to feel that. <laughs> all things going on, this world is not our home. It's a lot of things going on. And it's not to scare you, but it is scary sometimes. But with God, all things are possible. And you don't fear the fear that I'm, I'm afraid, so I don't know what to do. No, you keep working for the Lord. Steadfast and unmovable, and watch for how God will work in your life. But he says, which the righteous judge, the Lord, will give me on that great day of his return. And not just me, but all of us, all of those, all of us, all of who it is, whose lives show that they eagerly are looking forward to his coming back again. Now, the only way, brothers and sisters, that you can eagerly look forward to Christ's return is that you know you've got your house in order. You know that you're doing the work. You know that because time is running out, it's urgent that you stay on the battlefield for the Lord, that you know that uh, i got to keep working for the Lord, and it's going to be so many different things that are going to come at you before that time, whereas you might have been strong in this area, strong in that area, and the devil knew that, so he's going to try to bombard you with something even more powerful in his in his toolbox and from his agents uh, of evil. So whatever it is that you are weak in, that's what the devil is going to attack you in. Wherever you're weak, and you know, I'm not trying to judge you, but you know, this area I'm weak in. Maybe I don't study my Bible enough that he's going to utilize that on you. Maybe I don't think about my loved ones the way I should and care about them. He's going to use that on you. Maybe I don't seek to try to save those that are lost when opportunities present themselves. He's going to use that against you. Wherever you're weak at, and he knows your weakness, just like you do, he's going to use that on you. He's going to use it against you. And you're going to see it. But if you're blessed in doing what God wants you to do, you're going to see it, and you're going to be able to avoid it. But if you're not doing what God wants you to do, you're going to see it and you're not going to have the strength to avoid it. Because he's stronger in your flesh than he is in your spirit. That's why the scripture says, greater is he that's in you, which is the Lord, should be as Christians, than he that's in the world, which is the devil. He never will and never has had the strength to overcome God. If he could have, he would have. But he couldn't. That's why he's down here. 
doing all this evil stuff and trying to get us caught up in it. But it's not like the old Flip Wilson saying that when Flip Wilson did something wrong, I know you remember if you're as old as I am, he come on and he said, the devil made me do it. Well, if the devil is in you, he'll make you do a lot of stuff. But if he's not in you, he can't make you do it. If the Lord is in you, then you won't do the things that the devil wants you to do. You won't entertain the devil. You won't even let him in. You'll recognize him and say, get thee behind me, Satan. I recognize you. Get thee behind me. Stay behind me because I'm pressing on to the mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. I won't look back because that's where the devil is. I'll keep pressing forward in Christ Jesus. So yes, brothers and sisters, we're running out of time. And because we don't know when that end comes, that's why it's more important that you take a sense of urgency to stay focused on the Lord. Do the work. Endure to the end. Be watchful for the dangers that are all around us. Pay close attention. And before you know it, time is going to end. And when it does, you'll be ready. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to me. I pray that I've said something encouraging, not something discouraging. It should have been discouraging. As a child of God, you've ought to have been at least amen in the fact that those scriptures are true. And all I did was just gave a little bit more input, a little bit more explanation on what they mean in regards to time running out. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, Paul and Peter, these brothers, they, the, the brothers that was I was talking about, they realized time is running out, you know. And as we get older and we get wiser, we realize that time is running out as well. But we want to be more diligent for the Lord. Thank you. May God continue to bless you. Pray with me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blessed time that you have allowed us to come together and study your word. I pray that in this lesson there was something that will make all of us open up our eyes and pay close attention and be watchful for the things that are going on around us because all of it is happening for a purpose and that we should be ever more mindful and ever more uh, diligent in the study of your word and the application of your word. We should be able to see the sense of urgency uh, to touch others that don't know uh, you in the part of their sins and help them to recognize that time is running out and that they need you, Lord. And just like we must remember that Satan is here to vex us and he's here to, to tear up the church. He, he's here to draw as many away as he possibly can. I pray that there will be more, Heavenly Father, as we prepare to even come back and fellowship in the body of Christ in the, in the place where we come together, that the brothers and sisters in Christ will come back. All that have been absent because of this pandemic will come back because they see that God is making a way. So help us, Heavenly Father, as we go throughout this Christian world to stay strong, be diligent, to endure hardships, to be faithful. God, keep and direct us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, 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 everyone. I am Brother Clifton Boyd from Grand Avenue Church of Christ, and I am excited, 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 because I have the privilege of announcing to you when the doors of Grand Avenue Church of Christ will reopen. That's right, I said it. We are opening the doors of Grand Avenue Church of Christ. You ready? That date is September the 13th. September the 13th. Mark it on your calendars. All my wonderful family from Grand Avenue, mark it on your calendars. September the 13th. Grand Avenue will reopen the doors of the building. We want to thank our brethren for coming together so diligently, meeting, making sure we have things uh, <clears throat> in place so everyone will be safe and be able to come together once again as we have been waiting for and worship God in none other than spirit and in truth. We also want to thank our brethren that have been taking care of our grounds, even though we haven't uh, been there. Brother Malvern has been doing a wonderful job with making sure that the ground is is, is, is upkept. And uh, the Brother Stone, both Raymond Stone Sr. and Jr. Uh, have been working around the building on the outlook of the building. Brother Mitchell has been coming up and making sure the baptistry is right and doing other things. And 
all the brethren have been working together to record the services on Saturdays, making sure that they're ready for Sunday to go out. Brother Shaw has been doing an outstanding job at, at bringing the word and preaching God's word. And we have continually uh, been working, even though we were not able uh, to congregate like we uh, once did before. So we want to thank the whole church, the, everybody, all the Grand Avenue Grand family. You have done a wonderful job, and we want to thank you for that. And now God has blessed us. Uh, to be able to open those doors again. Now, uh, with that said, we still are under the pandemic, and so we still have things that our governing officials uh, have set in place um, that we have to comply to. And so we are asking you all to please work with us. I'm going to very quickly read uh, these things that we need to comply to um, and we're asking you all to cooperate and work with us so we can come together and enjoy one another's company and be able to sing together and worship together. Number one, when entering the building, please wear your mask. We are asking you to come to the building with your mask on, ready to worship. Uh, so please wear your mask when entering the building. If you don't have your mask or you have forgotten your mask we know those things happen there will be a mask that will be provided to you at the door so don't stop if you're if you're planning on coming come on and if you forget it uh, you don't have one then please uh, at the door let someone know there will be someone there let them know that you don't have your mask so they can make sure that you get a mask before entering the building Please refrain from removing your mask while you are in the building. So while you're in the building, please do not take your mask off. Um, and we just want to thank you for cooperating with us uh, and complying to that. We know we're still in this pandemic, so we have to do some things. But these are one of the things, the requirements that we have to do if we want to come back into the building and, and worship together. Please remember that. Now, to all the brethren that will be working doing the service, uh, if you are called upon to pray or to sing or to do communion, then you are permitted at that time to remove your mask while you are doing that uh, particular part of the service. But once you have completed, we are asking you once you have done that to please re uh, put your mask uh, back on. And we know that we can do that. These are just some things that we have to do uh, and comply with uh, with the officials. Um, we are asking that you please enter the building on the side that you have parked on. The front doors of Grand Avenue will be locked. No one will be permitted to come through the front doors and there's a reason for that. Every person that comes through must be screened. There will be no one out at the front in the foyer so we're asking you Please, if you go to the restroom out there, please do not open the door for anyone. Please direct them to the side entrances, to the designated spots uh, that we have asked for people to come through so we can make sure that everybody that comes through is screened and that everybody in the assembly is safe. So please, uh, those doors will be locked. There will be signs directing people. Uh, to the appropriate entrances of the church building. And we're asking you to help us. Help us make sure that uh, everyone is doing the right thing by doing what has been asked. So if you're there, you see someone, please just direct them to the sides of the building. And please do not open the front door. Uh, once you have entered uh, the building... Each person will be, will be required to be screened. What we mean by being screened is that your temperature will be taken. We will have a designated person that will be taking everyone's temperature that comes through uh, the door. So once your temperature is taken, if you have a temperature of 100 degrees or higher, we will be asking you to please uh, do not enter the building. You will be asked... Uh, not to enter and we will try to make uh, we're trying to make sure that you have 
arrangements and other options to where you can still uh, witness the service. Uh, we are trying our best to make sure that the online services are continued. And so if you have a temperature of 100 degrees or more, even if you feel great, if your temperature is outside of the guidelines, you will be asked uh, to leave and please uh, stream the service for that Sunday, okay? And uh, it would be great for you to seek the care of your primary care physician uh, if you are walking around with a temperature and you're not, and you didn't know that you had a fever. So please uh, comply with us with that. Uh, we are trying our best. Uh, in order to do this, we have to try to put in all the safety precautions that have been governed by our officials. And so we are trying our best to comply with those things. So please, if your temperature uh, is higher, 100 degrees or higher, then you will be uh, asked not to enter into the building and to stream the, the services for that Sunday. Okay? Um, once your temperature has been taken and you are screened and cleared and it's not 100 degrees and you are cleared, uh, you are now considered screened, okay? Uh, so you may enter the building for worship service at that point. Uh, each member is required to pick up a service bag. In that service bag, we will have um, your uh, envelopes to give. We will have uh, if visitor's cards if, you, if there's a visitor. Um, and we will have your communion cups, okay? So at that point, take your bag. There will be someone there that will have on gloves and a mask that will make sure that you have the appropriate things in your bag that will be handing out your bag. Grab your service bag, and then we are asking at that point to please hasten to your seat. We are trying our best uh, to start the service at 10 o'clock. We're only going to have one service on that Sunday, one morning service. There will be no Sunday evening service, okay? One Sunday service on that morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, our Wednesday night Bible classes will still be online. There will be no Wednesday night Bible class at the building. So the only time there will be a service at the building is at 10 o'clock on Sundays, okay? So once you get your service bag, haste into your seat, and let's get ready to have a wonderful worship on that Sunday. Uh, at that point, uh, once all of that is done and you have been screened and you have sat down, Let's have a wonderful worship service. Nothing else has changed at, the, change, has changed at that point. We are asking, though, that we try to keep as best as we can our social distancing. And what I mean by that is try to find you a seat that's not too close to anyone else and at least three seats apart. Three seats apart at our congregation is at least six feet. Okay? So let's try our best. Uh, to find us a seat. You might not get the seat that you always sit in. You might not get the seat that you love to sit in. But the wonderful thing about it is that no matter where you are in that building, you are in the house of the Lord. And you are ready to worship. And that's what it's all about. And so go find your seat. If it's not the seat that you're used to, Amen. Anyhow, go on to another seat. Enjoy the worship. Alrighty? Keep your mask on. Keep your social distancing. And let us have a wonderful time in the Lord. Lastly, what I would like to say is we will at dismissal. We are asking after dismissal prayer that nobody jumps up and starts congregating. We are asking that you stay seated and that uh, you be dismissed once the gentleman or whoever uh, whoever the brother is that's going to dismiss you by the rose, then we're asking you to please wait for further instruction, okay? We're going to try to dismiss in an orderly fashion. That way there's no, uh, you know, people won't get uh, too close to one another or bundled up at the door uh, trying to go out. Everything we, we're going to try to do is definitely going to be in an orderly fashion. So once dismissal prayer is over, please stay seated, wait for further instructions, and we can get out and everybody can get out safe and go on their uh, respective ways. 
If you can do that, which I know we can, we are going to have a wonderful time. I know we've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and now the time is here. So let us comply to these things in which our governor officials have set in place. And I just believe that if we do these things, then one, we are doing what God has commanded us, and that is obeying the law of the land. And then I just believe that because we are doing that and we're not stopping what God uh, would have us to do, God is going to bless Grand Avenue greatly. I know he will. And I know he's in the blessing business, and I just believe it. And so I'm excited. If you can't tell I'm excited, I I'm excited. And I am so excited to say again, September the 13th, Grand Avenue Doors will reopen again. And we pray that you would come out, Grand Family, and enjoy our worship service. And let us worship him in spirit and in truth. Now stay tuned, because lastly, there's just a short little snippet video that's going to show you how we are going to enter the building grab our service bag, and go on to our seats. May God bless you, and may he keep you. Love you. Say to God, come on, put those hands together. Let's praise him today. Let's praise him. Yes, there's just something about Sunday morning. The wheels that I can't on, wait. I can't oh, wait. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Hey, to sing and shout. To sing and shout. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise well, the Lord. Well, Sunday morning, Sunday.